We've seen a bunch of the 2022 cars now and I think they all look amazing. So Formula One banned wheel covers back in 2010 because they didn't improve overtaking as was intended. So for 2022, when the entire focus of the new cars is to improve overtaking, they brought them back. Like, <laughs> what? It seems bizarre on the surface, but today we're getting our airheads on to figure out the aero wizardry that these wheel covers are doing. And why did these new ones move with the wheels where the iconic brawn neon age ones didn't work? Let's go. So first introduced in 1990 on the Ferrari, but only for qualifying. Interestingly, in this first design, they couldn't run them for the whole race because the brakes would just overheat down to having little to no airflow through them. So they only ran them for the Monza race, which kind of makes sense. They were to clean up the flow over the wheels, reducing the drag and helping them eke out that little bit of extra top speed. Cross Ferrari was still four tenths behind Senna's McLaren for quali, but that was no surprise. The car was much better at the time. Ferrari tried them again in 2006 to better effect this time. In Bahrain, again a track where top speed is really important, they tried a pretty minimal approach and added these sort of fairings around the inner edge of the rim. But then later in the season, they added more full covers, just with a central portion removed so you could actually get the wheel gun in there, unlike the qualifying ones that were sort of bolted on top. Now, more and more teams were copying this and seeing benefits. As long as they could get the right amount of cooling to the brakes, the solution seemed pretty beneficial, with the teams running them for every circuit. Interestingly, Renault actually protested them at first before adding their own, and they added some pretty cool ones, but... If you can't beat them, join them, I guess. <laughs> now, as soon as the teams figured out you could do useful things with these covers, they went a bit mad with it. Fry ran this like dished cover with clever internal fins to cool the brakes and eject airflow out the back of the wheel. That was pretty clever. McLaren tried a version in 2008 with this sort of sticky out bit to improve outwash. And Ferrari ran this sort of mad fan cooling thing again to cool the brakes. So they got pretty creative. Anyway, just like 2022, the 2009 regulations cut back downforce and tried to improve overtaking. And the regs pretty much left the wheel covers alone, so they were still very much a thing in 2009. And Braun made sure people knew it. Now, some people love these neon colored covers, but I wasn't one of them. But the main thing with this era of wheel covers is that they didn't rotate with the wheel. And this enables cleaner air than if they did rotate with the wheel, but we'll get to that later. Ultimately, the regs change didn't work. Overtaking didn't improve, so for 2010, the FIA got rid of the wheel covers altogether. And that seems backwards to what's happening now, right? Where we're trying to make the cars better at overtaking. So that sent me on a mission to figure out how these things work and how it fits into the bigger picture of these cars that love to follow each other, supposedly. So the job is to clean up the airflow from the wheels. And because they're rotating, they're one of the worst offenders on the entire car, worse in a lot of ways than the wings themselves. And this is why the last generation of cars were covered in barge boards and turning vanes, all to get the wake out of the way of the rear of the car. But this outwash then hurt the cars behind. So really, Formula One are trying to cut this wake off at the source. So why are the wheels themselves so bad? Air, like any fluid, likes to stick to surfaces, but it can't hold on to the wheel while it's spinning. So the rotating nature of the wheels means that the air sticks and then gets thrown away from the surface. Now this happens in a pretty random pattern, so you start to create this turbulence. And then if you add in the spokes and the deep sort of dish shape of a wheel, and it only makes things worse. And so the wheel covers do a fair bit to fix this. You cover off all that internal stuff. Now you're still gonna get some turbulence from the wheels and the wheel cover combo because they're still spinning, but the surface is much cleaner, so less air is being thrown about. But I'm sure as many of you are thinking, then that then would make the static covers even better than the rotating ones, reducing the surface area that's rotating and cutting back on that turbulent flow. And yes, that's the theory. Now, back in 2009, they were able to shape these covers to feed the underfloor, creating more downforce, as well as creating outwash when that's needed. So this then made sense for Formula One to tightly regulate these new ones to stop all that. And so that touches on another point for this year's regulations, money. The previous wheel covers cost millions to develop and were cut on money grounds as well. So Formula One have brought them back, but as spec parts, which is clever. They're to be developed with BBS and the same ones will be supplied to all of the teams to stop all the spending money and also to clean up this airflow and stop all the outwash problem. But do they actually work? And here's where we're about to get nerdy. Here's where we thank Yin and Vision on F1 Technical who did some CFD on the early models of the 2022 cars. Link below. Look at this. Here is a CFD of a model of the 2021 car, so last year's cars. Notice a few things. Firstly, that the front wing is pushing air around the wheel, which then picks up the wheel wake and takes it well wide of the car. 
outwash. We, we know this. Then look at the 2022 car and look how little wake there is. The flow is much tighter around the car before being directed more central at the rear, pulling that wake central and up over the following car, hence reducing dirty air and all that stuff. Now this is a fairly basic model and there is much more going on here than just the wheel covers, but you can see the end result that F1 is aiming at. Much cleaner flow over the cars and much cleaner flow leaving the car at the rear clever stuff. Now we expect this to make a real difference. You can see in all the new cars the, the wheel covers on there and I think they look pretty cool but anyway have your say. And who would have thought adding sort of a bin lid onto the outside of the wheel would make that much difference but anyway we'll see throughout this year. Now one other big thing with these new cars is the front wings. The Aston Martin you could see with a massive high front wing and the, the McLaren was much lower and pointier and so What's that all about? Well, we made a whole other video here that you should check out. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.